hello my friends and welcome to another exciting one today's video is going to be a very quick one we are going to take a look at how we can convert our svg logos that we created inside of illustrator into 3d using blender and then the svg importer inside of blender so without much talks let's jump right into it So as usual, we are going to start from scratch. So we hit on general, so that we have our new fresh cube and then our light. So first let's select both of them, then let's hit on X to delete them from our scene. So next, let's jump into our editing software. It can be Illustrator, GIMP, or any editing software that you use, any vector software that you use. So I have this file here that I downloaded from a website. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. All you need to do is to save it as an SVG file. So I will do Control Shift S, save as, and then I make sure the save as type is set to SVG, and then I'll hit on save, and then I'll make sure I know where I am saving my file. So a quick tip is make sure there's as minimal points in the in the in the final logo as possible, as it will help make things easier once we jump into illustrator so once you have your svg file ready all you have to do is let's jump back into blender and then let's see how we can import this svg file and then make it 3d so first let's go to our, our, our file import and then we locate our scalable vector graphics so let's hit on it and it will ask us to show the location where we saved our svg file right so i have mine here I'm just going to select it and I'll hit on import SVG. So once I do that, it's going to import my SVG into my 3D scene, right? It's very small and tiny, as you can see it's here, right? So first, let's, if we select it, you can see we have our 3D viewport right here. So let's reset the 3D viewport. Let's reset the origin, point of origin. So if you select it, you can see we have our point of origin here. So if we try to scale it, it is going to scale from the point of origin, right? So first, let's reset the point of origin. So I'll go to object, set origin, and then I'll hit origin to geometry, right? Or we can do object, set origin, and then geometry to origin. So that it brings our, our shape right in the middle like this. Right, and then once you import it, it, it comes into Blender as a curve file. Right, the way we can know that is if we take a look at the properties here, you can see we have a curve property which comes with its own set of properties that we can tweak and edit. Right, so before we go, we further move on, let's change this kind of dark shading that comes with all the svg files so to change that into our normal shading let's drag here and then let's change this workspace to our shader editor and then you can see it comes with an svg material so let's hit on here to delete the material from it we are going to add in materials later on in the video right so next we have our flat svg here which is a curve so if i jump into edit mode you can see we have a curve here we can tweak it we can tweak the curves and edit if we want if that's what we want but no that's not what we want for here so let's tap back into edit mode and then let's see how we can extrude and then add some shapes so as simple as that once this is imported we can go to our curves property data property here and then we can go to our geometry so this one here and then we can increase the depth by hitting on extrude so if i drag my mouse holding shift to extrude it in a small increment i can easily add some extrusion to my shapes just like that my 3d my vector my flat 2d image has turned into 3d right so next there are a couple of settings here we need to consider so first we have the fill mode here if you want to fill the cap at the top and then at the bottom so on by default it is set to both you can change it to back and then we fill only the back without the front and then we can change it to 
front and then we fill the front without the back or we can change it to none and then both the front and the back is not filled depending on what you're going to use your 3d vector for but for now let's leave it to both so that we have the front and then the back filled like that nice and simple so next another important thing we have to take care of is the bevel right so as you can see this is it has a very sharp edges so let's try and add in some bevels so that if we add in our lighting our render is going to look good right so once we come to our bevel we increase the depth so with this if we increase the depth too much our logo is going to be distorted so once i start increasing it too much you see we have some shit artif artifacts here and there so let's try to increase it as little as possible but then we have some bevel so let's go with 0 0.1 0 0.0009 0 like this right so now we have a little bevel but then our shape is not distorted right so once once we are done that's it as simple as possible maybe the next thing we have to do is just add in materials and lights and then set up our scene for render as we always do so to do that all we have to do is do sh shift plus a and then let's add in a plane right we can bring the plane down on the set as this like this and then let's add let's scale this up so we hit on s to scale it up gc to bring it up like this so that it's lying on our plane nicely and then we can set up our camera and then our scene so i'll drag this here to set up our camera so i'll hit on our camera view and then we lock the camera to view then we can scroll our mouse wheel to set up the position of our camera to our liking right so next let's select this object and then let's next let's set this to render view then make sure we have our render engine set to cycles and then the device type will set it to gpu compute right so once we are done everything is set let's go to, let's go to our shader editor and then let's add in an hdri so weld scroll this select this one control plus t and then open and then i'll this is where i am um, a folder where i downloaded hdri you can get that you can get some from hdrhavens.com a lot of free hdris or just google free hdris download and then just select one of them and then hit on open image and then you get a lighting by default so we are going to use this to set up our scene nice and simple so once we select this let's change this from world to object and then let's hit on new to add in a new material let's make it metallic and let's change the color to something like this yellowish gold color and then let's decrease the roughness so that it's nice rough and shiny so next let's add in let's select this and then let's make it black so the plane the background new and then let's change it to black like this and then let's decrease the roughness so that it's not rough and then next let's add in a couple of lights to make our radar even nicer so we do shift plus a and then lights and then area lights then gz we can bring our area lights up like this maybe bring it back and let's decrease the power so let's say two and then shift a light area light and let's bring this on the side like this So she's seeing this on the side. Maybe we delete the one at the top. And then we can increase the power of this one to let's say 100. Now we have some nice reflection here. Then we can do Shift D to duplicate this light. Then we can bring this on this side like this. Then maybe decrease the size to 20. I have this nice reflection. Maybe change the shape from square to, let's say, disk. And then increase the size of the light. And then we can do G and then position it somewhere here. So that we have 
a bit of reflection like this and then we can just do shift D to create a duplicate just play around with it until you find something that works for you nicely like this and then once we are done and we are happy with everything we can set up our final render so I'll go back to my render properties hit color management and then maybe change the look to very high contrast to see what I have just feel free to play with the lighting and everything so you find what works best for you we scale this up so once we are done and we are happy with everything next what we have to do is do shift we go to render and then render our final image but before i do that i'm going to set my samples to 100 for now and then render i'll hit on render image to render my final 3d image so you can see nice and beautiful so this is my final render obviously we can add in more lights to light up the inner parts so that everything is nice and lit or you can play with the easy eyes as much as you want that's it for today see you on the next one it's my friend and peace out